Hey guys, I'm going to have to start really early on with an apology because things are changing yet again. Besides my room that you can clearly see has changed behind me. You might remember that last episode we changed it to Mind Blown. We had a bit of a look online and actually found there are some other sources that already have that name. So, unfortunately, if you don't like change, we're going back to rack your brains. Don't worry though, I'll definitely make it up to you with the content of this video. May the 4th be with you and Revenge of the 5th happened the other week. So I thought that this would be a perfect opportunity to talk about some of the technology that we currently have which revolves around Star Wars. I'm Nate and welcome back to Rack Your Brains. the speed of light through space or even surpassing that speed is something that science fiction novels and movies have definitely made very easy but unfortunately it isn't that easy at all. A couple of years ago NASA started to talk about some warp drive technology and a few months after that they released a lovely bit of concept art that started to circulate around the internet. Now the design for this spaceship was amazing but unfortunately it's only going to be able to be used in movies. The reasoning why this is the case is because, yes, it looks awesome and it would be amazing if we could travel through space at the speed of light, but we just simply don't have the understanding to be able to accomplish such a thing. I do realise, however, that does put a little bit of a wet blanket on this topic straight off the bat, but there is an alternative that I personally think is still pretty cool. This alternative is something that NASA has been working on for the last couple of years and it is in the form of ion propulsion. It's called NASA's Evolutionary Xenon Technology, or NEXT. It's been around for a while now, and some of the craft that they currently have in space use this type of technology, but it doesn't stop it from being amazing. This propulsion system uses electromagnetics to charge ions, which then force the rocket forward in space. What's really cool about this technology is that it gradually allows the craft to start moving at speeds of up to 145,000 kilometers an hour, and it also only uses a tenth of the fuel source that conventional rockets use today. It generates power from the conversion of solar energy into electrical energy. This is what charges the particles, forcing them out of the back of the craft, making it go forward. What's really awesome is that there is some hard evidence to support all of these claims that NASA is making after they have just completed a 48,000 hour test on this ion propulsion system. I know it's not light speed, but it's definitely an awesome alternative that's going to allow us to explore deep space. You know, don't trap yourselves in, I'm going to make a jump to light speed. That's it for the space travel. Now to move on to something that's pretty cool, I find. Lightsabers. A couple of years ago, scientists from MIT may have accidentally invented something that resembles a lightsaber. Unfortunately, this invention isn't going to lead to an elegant weapon for a more civilized age, but it's probably definitely going to help us with quantum computing. Photons, or the massless particles that make up light, were thought to have just passed through each other and not really interact in any way whatsoever. This was until the scientists of MIT looked a little bit closer and persuaded these photons to harden into a molecule. Once hardened, they realized that these photons actually do interact with each other and whack into one another. The way they viewed this was by shining lasers from six different angles at the photons which allowed them to cool and to slow down so that it could be observed. So this technology isn't going to lead to anyone losing a hand, but I definitely think it would be pretty cool to look at. Now it's time to talk about artificial limbs. The reason why I am talking about this is because in the new Star Wars trailer we see a cloaked figure with an artificial right hand. Oh my god, I wonder who it could be? I found out that we've actually got some pretty advanced artificial limb technology out there already in existence. Three Austrian patients have recently just participated in the world's first bionic hand reconstruction after nerve damage in their arm resulted in their distal arm no longer being able to be used. So they willingly gave it up and it was removed. The nerve damage didn't completely sever the connection from the brain to the distal limb. However, the signal from the nervous system was so insufficient that it actually wasn't allowing the muscle to be used. So, as an alternative, the patients gave up their arms and were given a bionic hand instead. This one worked off even the weakest of nervous signals. After some training, this allowed the patients to pour water, use keys, grab hold of things, and also button up their own shirts. And what's even more amazing is that they can actually feel some little sensation when they're grabbing things. 
I'm now going to talk about a little bit of a crossover between artificial limbs and also mind control. The reason why it is a crossover and not just solely talking about mind control is because we lack technology at the moment that allows one person to control the brain of another living organism. So this is going to have to do for now. We're not talking about telekinesis, but we are still talking about moving things with your mind. A 54-year-old woman who suffers from spinocerebellar degeneration has willingly consented to have brain surgery. She is one of a small handful of individuals who have had their brains opened and with an air gun had two attack side electrodes shot into their motor cortex. Because of this slightly invasive procedure, she is now able to move a robotic arm. She is able to stack blocks, pick up cups, and also high five and pose for pictures with some of the other scientists in the lab. There's no real happy ending in this tale, unfortunately, for this 54 year old woman. As time progresses, she is losing the ability to control the arm. This is because the electrodes are only able to pick up a small handful of billions of neurons within the brain and as these degenerate, the strength of the signal that they can pick up is starting to weaken so she's losing the ability to control the arm. Because of her procedure though, they are able to investigate into more sensitive forms of technology that would result in her being able to use the arm for extended periods of time. Now I'm going to finish off this video with a quick run through of some of the technology that I really didn't get a chance to talk about but is definitely cool enough that it needs to be mentioned in this video. We currently have small little robots or remotes similar to the spherical droids that Luke uses to train with. They're called spheres or synchronized position hold engage reorient experimental satellites and they are designed to do general tasks within zero gravity environments. There is another robot similar to the probe droids of Hoth that is called the V-Bat. This is an autonomous robot with a claw that hovers, whose responsibility would be to deliver payloads to hard to reach locations. To talk about something else that isn't quite as friendly, there are laws, or laser weapon systems. Early last year, one was actually put on a warship, and it can shoot down drones and small ships. There are a couple of downsides to this weapon, however. One of them is, is that it doesn't make a pew pew sound. And also, it doesn't really work on a cloudy day. The last invention that I'm going to talk about is awesome. It's in the form of a speeder bike. Except its name is not as cool. It's called the Low Altitude Tandem Duck Aerial Vehicle. The purpose of its design was for agriculture, transport, border security, and also search and rescue. It actually is really, really cool, except for it's only going to cost you around $100,000 or so. Now that's it for this Star Wars edition of Rack Your Brains. I had a lot of fun researching for this one because some of the inventions out there are pretty amazing. I'll make sure that for the next video we do keep the name the same. I will try not to change it too much. I'm Nate, and I hope I've racked your brains. One last bad fact about chocolate. Um, this is destroying my entire world and it's that white chocolate actually isn't chocolate at all because it has no cocoa butter in it at all. <laughs> My whole life is a lie.